What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we'll be looking at how to get the perfect product shots for your fashion brand. There is no use in creating beautiful designs and beautiful production if you can't showcase your items in a compelling way that's going to draw your customers to want to buy these items. So on today's episode, we'll be looking at how to get the product shots and provide tips and tricks ranging from how to actually style and dress your model and what steps to take as well as specific technical techniques for getting the perfect product shots, both when it comes to adjusting your camera and your lighting setup, and then finally provide a short list or a toolkit that fashion stylists and photographers should have on hand to help them when actually trying to get these shots. So if you've ever been interested in diving into the world of product photography, this is going to be the video for you. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. When it comes to getting great product shots, it's going to be an absolute shame if you have a great product that's extremely well fleshed out, but you don't have the photos to match. At the end of the day, great photography can be an invaluable selling tool when it comes to portraying your brand and towards getting customers. We'll look at the different components involved in setting up a great shoot, and we'll start off with the models themselves. How do we set up that scenario and how do we dress our model in a way that makes sense is efficient and is going to get us the best return on our time and financial investment. When it comes to dressing your model, let's look at the order of events in which a model should be dressed. First, you'll need to consider your outfits carefully. Go into a photo shoot knowing which outfits you need to shoot and in which order you're going to shoot them. You also want to make sure you minimize any unnecessary back and forth between a model putting things on and taking them off. Also, the order in which items are put on is extremely important. This is not something you may have thought about, but it is something you should definitely consider. So what do I mean by this? Imagine a scenario in which your model has to try on a variety of different pants. And in this case, since we're looking at sportswear, we're using tapered pants. But your model has their shoes on first for some reason, and they have to take these pants on and off, creating unnecessary wear and tear and potentially damaging or soiling the clothes. So you need to make sure that the list or the order in which your model puts on each outfit is organized and structured. You start off with the shoes first and foremost, or actually the bottoms, sorry about that, and then the shoes. Next, we move in the tops. After we've put on the bottoms and then the shoes, we'll put on the tops. So if it's a t-shirt, a tank top, so on and so forth. And then you style with any additional accessories like hats, bracelets, so on and so forth. This is going to minimize the wear and tear on the clothing and is going to ensure that your model is putting on the outfit as efficiently and as straightforwardly as possible. Once you've dressed your model, now you need to review the actual garment. How does it sit on your model? How is it interacting with the physique? You want to make sure that things fit correctly and at the same time, review which type of photography you're actually shooting. Are you shooting a on-site photography or sort of urban lifestyle style photography in that case you may be afforded a little bit more flexibility in terms of how things sit on your model how things look uh, things don't necessarily need to be super symmetrical the creases in the folds and where the fabric hangs and hangs off the model doesn't have to be super worked out but at the same time if you're shooting in studio where the purpose is to maintain as much consistency between each shot as possible you want to actively review the creases the folds the way the fabric hangs how it sits on the model, are there any unnecessary um, details such as lint or threads. These are going to be things that are going to save you a lot of work in post-production. So make sure that you get those details done first and foremost. Consider the type of phot photography you're shooting first and then go for the details. Now that we've reviewed the outfit on the model, let's look at how the outfit translates to on your camera screen. Just because you see something on site, in person, to your eye, doesn't mean that that's exactly how it's going to translate on camera. You need to make sure that what you're seeing in person is also what's being translated to the final product. 
One or a couple things to make sure of are things like the focal length. If you're shooting on site in a lifestyle setting, then wider focal lengths may be a little bit more accepted. But if you're looking to shoot in studio, you'll definitely want to make sure that your garment is being represented as accurately as possible. So focal lengths that are extremely wide, like 16, 18, may not be suitable. You want to get a focal length that is as close as possible to the human eye as possible. This is around 50. For standard photo shots, you'll want to look at 50. If you want to go for more detailed and macro shots, you can go up to 100 if your lens allows it. And if you want to shoot full outfits and you need a little bit more space, you can consider going down to as low as 40 or 35. This is going to be the absolute minimum or the widest lens size that I would recommend using, especially in a studio shoot. Anything wider than that is going to distort the clothing and distort the model. This is going to create an unflattering and an undescript final result. Something that some of you may not have necessarily thought of is to consistently check the makeup or hair of the model. This is logical. Chances are that when you're changing your outfits and you're going between different outfits and different clothing types, that you're going to be creating a scenario in which your hair might get messed up or the model's makeup might get smeared. So actively looking at those things and making sure that they are intact between each part of the shoot is going to save you a lot of headache and work in post-production. Making sure that everything is on point before every single set you shoot should become a habit and it's also a positive or a plus to create a mini checklist, even if it's a mental one that you go through before shooting each time to make sure that you're getting the best shot possible. Now that you have everything set up from the camera to the outfit itself and the makeup, you want to make sure that the model actually delivers the right posture and the emotions. You don't necessarily have to have a high-end director or someone dedicated to this, but having someone on site, whether it's you or a partner, that can actually communicate with the model what they need to deliver in terms of the shoot emotions and posture is going to be extremely beneficial in terms of staying on brand and getting the most out of the shoot as you can. If you're going for a more aggressive look and the model is portraying much more of a soft and sort of shy look, this is not necessarily something that you want to translate. It could be applicable in certain shoots or scenarios, but not in this one. So making sure that the emotions and posture are on brand and deliver the right look and feel to the end photos is going to give you the results that you want. Now, let's look at some techniques for getting the perfect shot. You're on site and you're ready to start clicking. Let's look first at maintaining a coordination between your colors. You'll need to test your camera setup for every single color you shoot. Bear in mind that not all colors are represented equally, especially when it comes to a digital camera shooting digital photos. You'll want to be able to work your colors according to the scene that you're setting up and to work your camera settings according to the colors that you're shooting. So whether it's something to do with your settings itself, the color balance, the ISO, or even the aperture, or it's something to do specifically with the daylighting or the artificial lighting you're using, Actively monitoring how your colors are being represented on screen is going to go a long way towards minimizing the amount of work that you do in post-production and at the same time giving you a favorable result that you may not even be able to achieve if you have a poor beginning photo and even if it's coupled with great post-production editing. It's important to maintain even and clear lighting. Though Contrast and shadows can be a very, very useful tool for photographers in creating mood and atmosphere. When it comes to shooting standard studio product shots, this trait is not desirable as it can almost be deceptive to customers. When you create high contrast, you're not actually conveying your product. So consider using a standard three point lighting studio setup and always shoot in a completely darkened room where you can manipulate and you can control your lights as much as possible. Any light spill from the outside is going to create an invariable which you can't control. So by shooting in a dark room and setting up with a three-point light setup, you have full control over your lighting. I would consider using a three-point lighting setup because it's the most standard and it completely creates a balanced look and feel to your shoot. You'll want to use a key light and you'll want to use a fill light from the front. Your key light is going to create the main lighting source for your subject and the fill light is going to help fill in those shadows. You'll also want to consider using a rim light for the back 
This is going to create a sharp silhouette for the back that's going to help your subject stand out and it's going to clearly define the silhouette of the garment. When shooting, consider using white reflectors. This is going to help reflect color absorbing light that occurs when you're shooting very, very shiny objects such as accessories that are made out of metal, especially if you're in the middle of a jewelry shoot. This is going to help prevent unnecessary glare and is going to keep your shots looking very crisp and looking very clear and direct. In order to help you see your product details more clearly in your finished shots, consider doing one of two things. When shooting white product photos, consider underexposing by one or two stops. And when shooting black product photos, consider overexposing by one or two stops. This is going to help counteract the extra light bounced off of white products and the extra light absorbed by black products. Also, make sure that once you're in post-production to check these photos to make sure that both your highlights and your shadows are balanced and that everything looks as it should be. This is going to be a tip for items that you're going to shoot with suede, fleece, or even velvet. Consider using a soft brush to brush the surfaces of these items to give them a more consistent and standard looking approach. This is going to prevent your items from looking dirty, uneven, or even defective. As a rule of thumb, it's always better to shoot a great photo to begin with than to invest a lot of time, money, and effort in the post-production process, trying to make up for the mistakes you made when shooting your photos. And lastly, pulling in from my own experiences being parts of shoots on both the studio and the lifestyle photography side, these are some tools that we found extremely useful to keep with us and to bring with us at all times. Number one is pins. So where would you use a pin? Well, let's just say you're shooting with a model and you haven't had time to make the necessary adjustments. Let's just say a jogger is too long. Pins or bobby pins are going to be an invaluable asset to helping you hem and to make things look more natural and to hold them in place. So you would fold in the bottom cuff and then use a pin there to keep it in place. This is very common practice in the fashion world. Also consider using clips. Something like a snap or an alligator clip is going to be very useful on the studio photography side. Chances are you'll be shooting with a white infinity roll and we know that those things are extremely tough to keep in place. Once you roll them down and you lay them out, they kind of want to keep rolling forever. So in order to keep them in place, consider using alligator clips to hold and to clip the paper in place when it comes to the roll itself so that you don't have any unnecessary slippage and you're not dealing with that consistently throughout your shoot. Also consider using tape. Tape such as gaffer tape or craft tape is going to be extremely useful, especially when you're delineating the borders of your frame or where the model should stand. This is going to be especially useful on things like videos where you're doing a walk in, walk out style and you want the model to stop and turn 360 in a center position. So by being able to confidently accurately mark that spot, you'll make sure that you maintain a consistency between each photo shoot and each video shoot. If you're shooting with velvet, fleece, or even suede fabric, using a stiff brush to help you maintain the consistency of the surface is going to be great. Also, potentially look at using fishing lines or invisible threads if you're trying to create the illusion of items floating in space or you're trying to hold things together. This is going to be extremely easy to brush out in post-production because it's extremely minimally invasive and it's almost transparent, so that's a plus. There's other types of scissors that you may want to have on site Things like fashion snippers, especially if you have extra threads that you consistently need to be able to snip off and just to make sure everything is tailored and is quite perfect. Blue tack or any other type of semi-permanent adhesive is going to be great to helping things stick together without having the irreversible quality that you get with permanent glues like super glue. Also look at measuring tapes, especially if you're measuring the garment on site for any adjustments or tailoring you need to make. And then lastly, lint rollers are going to be invaluable when it comes to shooting darker colors that tend to hold on to white or dust much more readily. This is extremely difficult to get out in post-production. So having a lint roller on site, especially when dealing with certain fabrics as well, like wool is going to save you a lot of trouble when it comes to your post-production editing. Well, that's pretty much it guys. That's a wrap. That's been my tips on how to get great product photography shots. Hopefully you guys have the tools, tips and tricks, and even the specific items that you may need for the next shoot you go on. And that way you guys can come off this shoot or that shoot with the best shots possible, 
to portray your items in the best light possible. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really does help us out. And let us know if you want to see more fashion photography style videos. We'd love to share those with you. And if you guys want to see more episodes like this, consider subscribing if you guys haven't already. Until next episode, guys, stay awesome.